unhinged public school teacher freaks out at peaceful protesters at an anti-lockdown event. Apparently, teaching little kids about anal sex and global warming also qualifies you as an epidemiologist. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness of packing K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today we start in Bend, Oregon, where we have a bent video of a bent teacher that has gone viral after the woman had a complete meltdown at the site of people protesting COVID lockdowns. Just start with the, the video. <laughs> She's clearly mentally stable. She was driving her Subaru uh, down the street and basically decided that, you know what? It's, it's my time to shine here. I'm going to park, apparently let my wipers go. For no reason. For no reason. And absolutely scream at all these peaceful protesters who are just saying that we don't think these lockdowns should be happening. But I think it's clear that maybe certain people Maybe this woman in this Subaru should be the one locked down. Do you remember any instances of all that Black Lives Matter protesting, Katie, where you had white wow. bigots driving fast and doing this? We don't no. have a single piece of video, do we, from all those evil white supremacist racist guys like me out there driving by and, and just like, hello, F you, F you, F you, MRFers. It's always these leftists. And is it my imagination? Throw the, 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 the picture. Is it, is it that Alyssa Milano Jr.? Jr.? It looks just like Alyssa Milano. All right? It's un, almost uncanny. That is the love child of Alyssa Milano and Joseph Stalin. So the thing that gets me about this is, yeah, all right, fine. You want to carry on this way. And the school uh, did this what schools do, right? They tell us it's a personnel issue. We can't really talk about it. She has apparently been suspended pending an investigation, and we know no more. But it's the intolerance. The, this thing that gets me about this, and it's a, it's a serious question for you, Mom and Dad America. How can we trust our universities and our public schools to be the caregivers and the providers of tolerance. They've, they've literally rejected their educational role. Teachers aren't really responsible for making your kids smart, learned, literate. They're responsible for sociologically and socially and emotionally making your kids the kind of kid that would live in a progressive utopia. But how can we trust these teachers, even with your kids' social welfare, when they are completely incapable of a single act of tolerance, where they are completely and utterly unable to tolerate anything that runs against their worldview. It would seem to me that situations like this completely inviolate. They, make, they render completely inoperable the idea that this young teacher is going to be able to turn your kid into anything else but a roaring bigot like herself. She has no ability to tolerate. She is, by definition, shockingly unhinged and intolerant. And yet, the minute she steps up into your kid's classroom and starts teaching on the board, she's an expert on tolerance of, well, radical left-wing positions. And it's kind of fascinating considering she probably actually really hasn't been in the classroom teaching with a whiteboard because she's a first year teacher. That's all we know about her. They won't say exactly where she is or what her name is, probably because she'll go off on them. Guarantee but, you. Good. But uh, she is, so she's being a first year teacher. They've been in school a couple months and they're protesting the fact that there's lockdowns, which means the kids aren't in the school. So she's been teaching online, presumably. We don't know what she's been doing. If she does anything like she's been doing in her Subaru, we know the well, kids have been cursed at many a time. No, because there's no – these kids are unable to respond. These kids, these kids are brainwashed and they're allowed – they're forced to sit there and listen to this. And they don't, they're not – anytime they put back any kind of a – if they even bravely do try to counter her, she cuts them off immediately. And you mentioned something about right, whiteboards and blackboards. This, this whole thing is, is pretty stunning when you, thought, you stop and think about it. If, I promise you this. 
if she were some hairy knuckled white guy screaming at uh, uh, people who are supporting the lockdown, you'd know his name. You'd know this teacher's name. You would know his background. You would have already seen his Twitter feed. If this were some crazy lunatic white guy screaming at pro-lockdown people and who happened to be a teacher, the response would be a lot more uh, swift and specific. Well, what's specific and fascinating about her is being the first year teacher, and you can tell that she's younger, you can really, it's encapsulated in her response, or I guess her just yelling at all these protesters, what she's learned in her university yep. and maybe even before that. And you can tell that obviously what she's been putting into her classroom. And I know a lot of it was bleeped out because she was cursing, but the fact that she immediately put the children in almost as shields for something, for her own actions, the kids had nothing to do with it, but she decided to put the kids in there by saying, I'm a effing teacher i work in schools so here you go children i'm going to put you out in front and she says f you f you i'm a teacher i teach students well if you really cared about those students you wouldn't be putting them out front as your shield yeah. for your rant that you just went on she is a walking talking embodiment of the emptiness of social justice warriorhood she is factually ignorant she is temperamentally unfit she is intellectually devoid she is physically unable to contain herself she is what you get when ideology replaces knowledge she is what you get when ideology is valued over wisdom and study and hard work and you 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 you, you skipped perhaps the most important bleeped out quote Kate at which she looked at one of these protesters who was minding her own business, engaging in her uh, First Amendment right to protest. We've been told, right, that protest is inviolate. If people are protesting, they cannot be cr critiqued. She actually said to the woman in front of her, B-I-T-C-H, kill yourself. Kill yourself. Now, this is somebody who would be the first to lash out at online bullies who were um, trivializing other kids, driving kids to suicidal thoughts. She, this bullying would be at the top of this creepy young person's list of progressive ways to get at kids and to change their behavior. And there she is literally telling somebody to just go kill yourself. Uh, to me, that's the, the bottom line here. Uh, if, if this had been done to her, if this had been done to one of her kids, if this, this kind of bullying existed in a parental home, she'd have been all crusading over this. And now at the moment's drop of a hat, just turning a corner, seeing a protest, down comes the window, on goes the wipers, and out comes the, literally, the damning charges of go kill yourself. Well, we all made it to level 12 in Jumanji of this horrible, awful, no good, whatever Alexander says in his book, uh, 2020 of a year. And it's been quite rough. And you know, we were all excited. Let's at least get some holiday spirit. Let's say, you know, Santa Claus, bring me something nice this holiday season, this Christmas season. And instead, Santa is just flat out denying our children for their Christmas gift requests. And it's right to their faces. The to a little six-year-old boy, to be specific. A little kid was actually claws blocked at the mall. Uh, he was, this is a word, TM after it, invented by yours truly. He was claws blocked, baby, claws blocked. Sabella DiCarlo is the mother of little six-year-old Michael. They decided, we're going to go see Santa. You can ask Santa, you know, what you, or tell him what you want for Christmas. And they had done this at the Harlem Irving Plaza in Norwich, Illinois. And so Santa, doing what Santa does, says, well, little boy, what do you want for Christmas? And it took Michael a moment to think, well, you know, what do I really want? And then when he finally said, you know what? I want Nerf guns. Here's what Santa said. No, I, no, no guns. Nerf guns? No, not even a Nerf gun. No, if, you, you, if your dad wants to get it for you, that's fine, but I can't bring it to you. It's okay. Hey, buddy. What in the world are we doing? Although, I must say, Katie, we should really look at our history. This would not have happened if it weren't for a Christmas story. Oh, I mean, you go back to the Santa Claus in the 1950s, and when, when little Ralphie's up there, he wants the equivalent, a 1950s equivalent of a Nerf air gun would have been a Red Ryder BB gun, and what did Santa Claus say? You'll shoot your eye yeah. out, kid. This is a deep, this is systemic 
clause blocking. We have a systemic problem in this country with clause blocking Santa Clauses. It is part of our systemic heritage of Santa Clauses who are really creeps. I mean, it's Billy Bob Thornton all over again. You like that movie. I cannot stop laughing at them, maybe both of them. Ugh. Anyway, back to the serious point of poor little Michael, a real six-year-old boy, Michael. not just Hollywood's Santa Claus movies. Um, Mom blasted them all, and the Santa specifically, on Facebook. She said, my poor baby, this was the first year Michael was excited to go see Santa, because let's be honest, Santa's scary for most children uh it was supposed to be magical but instead i had to watch my sweet little boy fight back tears because santa told him no because of his own personal beliefs and again it may have been hard to hear exactly what santa said there but he said when michael said i want a gun like nerf guns i want nerf guns santa said no i can't do that no not even no nerf guns. guns no your dad will have to get that and mom even chimed in and had said like nerf guns we're, we're not we're talking about foam arrows in a representative for Harlem Irving Plaza, actually then publicly apologized and then also said that that Santa, woke Santa, uh, had actually been out of a job now, had resigned, and they immediately contacted the family to kind of apologize and say, you know, this isn't what we want for well, our Santas, because they used an outside third-party company. Right. So let's be honest. And, and how did the mall fix this? So there was a mistake made yesterday, huh? Yeah. Well, we're so sorry about that. I heard about this up at the North Pole. Yeah, me too. And I rushed down to help. But well, this is crazy. Just listen for it. What? Wait. This is... It's just a Nerf gun. <laughs> wow, we see a This is crazy, this thing. All's well in America when the kid gets a Nerf gun bigger than his head. So unfortunately, we keep hearing these stories about our poor children, elementary age children getting suspended, getting yelled at, getting told that whatever's in the background of their Zoom sessions is unacceptable. And a little while ago, we talked about there was a fourth grade student who was suspended for six days because he dared to have a BB gun in view of his fellow classmates while on a virtual call. Now, Kamari Harris is nine years old and he was in his bedroom for his class and he was taking a test. And so he had his volume muted. And basically what happened is one of his siblings had come into the room and kind of either stepped or tripped on the gun or, you know, Kamari didn't want him to. So he then picked the gun up and moved it in view of the camera, but then it was out of sight of the camera because he was just moving it for a moment so he could place it on a chair next to him. Well, his teacher then was like frantically trying to get his attention and uh, then the computer disconnected. See, all these technology problems that we're having. So then the teacher, I guess, freaked out sort of or you think? became concerned and then tried getting a hold of the family, couldn't get a hold of the direct family, but they got a hold of the grandfather who's the emergency contact, whatever, and said that Kamari had a gun in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's how it, it escalated quickly. And then... So this little incident then turned into a suspension and an expulsion, an expulsion for Kamari. Now, this is happening at Woodmere Elementary School in Jefferson Parish in Louisiana. So initially, the school had recommended that he be expelled for possession of a starter gun, stun gun, and or Facsimile, according to the Jefferson Parish Public School Policy and In, Procedures. Including a Nerf replica gun. Yes. Now, at a hearing, it was determined that he was guilty of displaying a facsimile gun, so the BB gun. He was guilty of display. <clears throat> yes. Okay. You give kids toys, the kids display them in their bedroom, and because you're on a public school cam, you see the... Just got to stop there for a second. Guilty of display. Nothing illegal about them. Clearly it's a toy. The little boy is allowed to possess it. It is his own home. It is his own private bedroom. But they find him guilty of display. Is that what happens when you have uh, uh, flashers in the park? You're, what are you, you would really know guilty? better than me. I have well, no idea. Well, the last idea. time I was arrested for flashing in the park, what they got me on was display. They said, hey. Nobody they, complained. They got out their magnifying Nobody glasses complained. and they said, well, that's because no one was there to you see it. You got six business cards. I got six, six big business cards with phone numbers on the back. 
If they're your own face on the but card, it the, does not count. It wasn't the face that I was displaying. It was display. But I go seriously, go back. This is displaying, displaying a toy gets you expelled from a public school. So basically what happened then is it went from at this hearing and how he was guilty of display. They went from being expelled at least to a six day suspension and a social work assessment. And then the parents appealed it again. And here's what happens. The appeal hearing was to determine if Kamari's six-day suspension for having a BB gun in view of his virtual class back in September while in his bedroom should be overturned. The Woodmere Elementary fourth grader said he was moving it so his brother didn't trip on it. The Harrisons have argued their home is not an extension of Kamari's classroom. The school system stood its ground and refused to change his record. That, even after a new law was passed and named in Kamari's honor to deal with similar situations. Are you aware that you got suspended because you brought your BB gun to school? I didn't bring a BB gun to school. School board member Simeon Dickerson, a former teacher, asked Nyron Harrison, Kamari's father, to think of how his teacher felt seeing a gun on her computer screen. I know what a BB gun looks like, and you know what it resembles? A real gun. Okay. It resembles a real gun. They were in that boardroom. The father and son, Lil Kamari, had to sit through more than six hours before dad finally stood up and said, Kamari, let's go. Like, they had had enough at this point because they'd been through the ringer over and over about this little BB gun. Not even an instance of, oh, I wanted to bring my toy gun for show and tell, which we've seen that many a times. Or even, what was it, Toast? That was cut into a, a, yeah, a gun. Yeah, a pop-tart. Pop-tart. It was a pop-tart. Toast might be too difficult to do. But the fact that they were in there for six hours and they still, it wasn't resolved at that point. Ultimately, what did happen, according to the school, is at, at the board meeting, they had said, no, we're going to stand our ground and we're going to do it. But ultimately, they did change it to a three-day suspension mm. and three unexcused absences. So this, this is going to carry around on this kid's record for right. the rest of his... And isn't it interesting that the unexcused career. absences are not the little boy not wanting to go to school. He's being charged for unexcused absences when the school is the one excusing him. Are you effing kidding me with this story? It's time for some real education. Russian painter and art theorist Vasily Kandinsky was credited as the pioneer of abstract art. The Moscow-born artist creation of abstract work came after a long period of development and maturation of intense thought coming from his artistic experiences. Yeah, this is really interesting that people don't recognize that uh, when you think of abstract art, you think of uh, the Impressionists, you think of Picasso, you think of what happened in the middle of the 20th century, but very few people realize that the movement had a major beginning in Russia uh, under the Soviet period where you've got artists like Kandinsky. And it kind of makes sense to me that you think about the soci sociological chaos of Soviet Russia in the middle of the 19th, early part and middle of the 19th century. Uh, Kandinsky himself had a huge problem with the sociological uh, behavior of the socialists. He could not completely, he could not conform to socialist constructions of art and art repression. He ended up fleeing to Germany. But it was in the Soviet Union where you get this sense from Kandinsky that everything is abstract. It kind of makes sense. If you think about the way socialism and socialist governments, communist governments, distort reality, distort truth, distort identity, dis distort the law, distort justice. It's interesting that uh, one of the major voices of early uh, surrealist and abstract art was a guy like Kandinsky, who was uh, living in a culture that was itself warped. Take a look at the picture we're dealing with here. This is the one that, uh, that he's got so many really important uh, uh, images. This is just one of them. It's called Composition Six. It was published, it was uh, painted in 1913. It's oil on canvas. And this is about uh, 24 versions of this he did before he got to the one where he was completely happy with it. And while I am uh, myself not a huge fan of abstract art, there is something really very moving and very synthetic, uh, something very synthesizing about this picture. The colors flow. There's a great deal of movement in the painting. It does. It, 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 it suggests... Uh, uh, it, it suggests 
agitation. It says social sweep. It suggests many aspects of what the abstract art movement was going to become. And it's just really nice, I think, to give the Russian Kandinsky uh, his share of the credit for what would become a major movement in abstract art. All right, before we go, just a reminder that the best way to keep up with our various shows here at Freedom Project is to follow us on Parlor. So take a moment today and start following at Dupesta, at Katie, and at Freedom Project. And if you're a fan of the show, please consider, at this time of year, a one-time tax-deductible donation to support our Patriot Club, and we're going to send you an awesome Tumblr. All you have to do to sign up is visit PatriotClub.us. That's Patriot Club. Dot US. Now, we're going to wrap things up with the fun fact of the day. Did you know that every year since 1994, there has been an event, and they call it SantaCon. It's now in more than 300 cities across the world, and it's basically a pub crawl. But don't worry, kids, the real Santa has not been spotted there. It's just a bunch of fake people who want to dress up as Santa to stay warm while they're guzzling their libations. And I make the point I made earlier. When did Santa Claus become SantaCon? Right? When did Santa become a con? When did Santa become a brawling, drinking, left-wing skull? When did this happen? How did this happen under our very noses? This is what happens when you leave uh, progressives in charge of anything. And that's going to do it for this show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, stay educated, my friends.